Hello, happy Thursday. Uh, actually, today's Monday, but I have time while I'm driving back home um, and want to make sure that I get this recorded this week so that it gets posted on time because um, I'm going to be working on Thursday, which I haven't done in a little while, so that's exciting. Um, hello. My name's Angela. I do the Raw and Real podcast. I'm a health and life coach. Um, welcome. Today is Monday, the 23rd, and it happens to be my birthday. Um, and in reflecting on that this morning, um, I have had a really cool like last five days. Um, so since last week's podcast, basically. So last Thursday, I alluded to wanting to talk some more about some... Um, like what is evangelicalism and like what not not necessarily what is it I guess just like me and where I am in my journey of it can I call myself a Christian Um, so basics yes I can call myself a Christian however the last five days have taught me a lot about um what I grew up in, where I want to go. And it is sunny out today, which is very exciting for my birthday. It's just a little bit chilly for May 23rd. But anyways, there we are. Much better. Okay. So here's what I've concluded. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about this in a really peculiar kind of way. So since my senior year of high school, I've always felt like I'm going to die young. And that unnerved some people, as you might imagine. I was fine. I was unnerved like the first 48 hours, and then I was like, meh, okay, I can deal with that. Um, didn't really plan to go to college, because figured I wouldn't be, you know, I'd be dead by then, so it wouldn't matter. False. Um, that is not how that went. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I ended up, obviously, like, graduating from college, and I did that five years ago. So, um, here we are. We, the, like, the longer that I've lived since coming to the conclusion that I'm going to die young, the more peculiar that's gotten. And sometimes, like, the more restless I've gotten. Um, I feel stir crazy. I feel like I'm trapped. Um, and that really started to become an issue in the last week or so, where, like, I felt trapped within my own life. Um, and that's just, like that's strange to me because my current partner has been telling me since the day that we met like I have a voice I need to use it and he's never going to keep me from anything that I can do whatever I want that if I want him to get out of my house like all I have to do is say so um just like all of these things he's like you literally can do anything you want I'm never gonna stop you and I was like hmm weird that didn't really sink in until recently and I don't know if it's still really sunk in to be honest with you but anyway so this whole like feeling like I'm gonna die young thing I obviously grad I had brain surgery while I was in college um still was like yeah it's no big deal because I'm gonna die young anyway brain surgery does it great no problem um all of these like weird twisted thought processes okay and then when I graduated from college and I still obviously wasn't dead I was like huh And then it became this thing where, like, I really felt like the year I turned 27 would be the year that this would happen. That I was going to, like, I wasn't going to make it past 27 was, like, this idea I've had in my head for five years. And in, like, January, February, I was like, oh, gosh, I turned 27 in May. Uh, wait a minute. (laughs) Like, this is this marker that I've kind of had that marked when my life was going to end. Or, like, I'd be dead by then. Or I would be, I would have this happen when I turned 27 or, like, sometime that year. Um, so, that's been kind of, that was, like, it was a holy shit moment. But it also was, like, okay. And that's probably not real because it hasn't been real the whole time. Like, I'm still alive. So I kind of dismissed it, but also, you know, it sits back here on a shelf. Okay, so five days ago, 
I learned that there was some shifting in some ministries that I used to be involved in and people have left and that requ- like people leaving requires this organization to sh- like shift and change in some capacity. <clears throat> that person leaving really opened up the concept that I could go back into ministry or that I could like want to participate in something some kind of Christian organization of some sort. Um, and that was something that I'd really railed against for the last couple years because I've been so hurt, traumatized, abused um, by Christian organizations. Now, let me clarify because it was Christian fundamentalist organizations, Christian evangelical um, spaces that I got hurt in. And now I'm understanding that there's another option, which is wild. Like, guys, I went to a year of seminary. I did three semesters of seminary and did not understand that there was something else besides Catholicism and evangelicalism. Didn't know that that's what it was called. Didn't know. Otherwise, I probably would have seen some red flags sooner, I guess. But I didn't know any of this. I didn't know there was something else. I didn't know there was another option. I just thought they were all the same. Um... And having been in a Christian world my entire life, gone to seminary, done all the things, like, that blows my mind. So, in my beginnings of questioning and discovering in the last five days, I asked a pastor who's not in an evangelical sphere um, some of my hard questions. Like, what makes your church be different than evangelicalism, than Christian fundamentalism? What sets your church apart? Why, why is it different? Tell me how this happened. Um, also, tell me, riddle me this, how does Christianity and femininity, how can they coincide? Because I've been taught my whole life that they can't, that I don't get a place there. I don't get a place at that table. And the God that I read about in the Bible basically tells me that that is false but I can't understand because the Bible has been pushed at me through this lens of you're a woman, you don't get a voice. Fundamentalist views. All of it's bullshit, in my opinion. <clears throat> no, maybe not just in my opinion. I believe it's bullshit, period. <laughs> so anyways, um, what happened next? I asked the questions. This pastor reassured me that I do get a place at the table, that in his church, his denomination, that I, as a woman, get a place in the pulpit. And I was like, really? Um, and gosh, it just, it, the conversation helped me so much. It gave me permission to like step out of things that I felt like I'd been trapped in um, as far as my Christian beliefs. And it's been allowing me to expand my own aliveness. um, To get back into a place where I'm believing in God from here and not from all of these outside influences. It is the best thing ever. And this pastor that I spoke with, he really affirmed that I'm allowed to listen to my heart. That my soul will speak to me Some of these are my words, not his, FYI. Um, But that I'm allowed to trust what's in here. And I don't have to only, I don't don't have to trust this at all, but I can trust what's in here. Um, Today I turned 27 and I've been practicing the last like two or three days. I've been not even practicing, but like experimenting with what is it like for me to speak or act in a way that is not from these abusive spheres that I've previously been in? And what would it be like for me to act or speak from these new places? And holy buckets, you guys, I found so much freedom. Like freedom in my relationships, freedom in myself, Um, freedom in what I read, freedom in how I think. It's just like the floodgates are open and it is, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Um, so today I turned 27 and I remembered this morning that 27 is this like time stamp that I had stamped on myself. And it really feels like within the last five days that I have died and 
have become new. That I've been like reborn, as they say, um, in a place of freedom, in a place of peace, in a place of inexplicable joy. Because I have started to make my own decisions when it comes to my faith journey. Um, that I have realized that I don't have to listen to these voices. That I can truly trust myself. And it has alivened me. It has helped me stop giving myself away to other people, other entities. And has allowed me to belong to myself. Or at least to start that process. And I... Like, part of me feels like I don't even have words for this because I am just so excited that I get to have this experience, that I get to have this, like, oh my gosh, I can be whoever I want to be. And there are a couple of people in my life um, that have really been telling me this for a long time. One is my mom. Um, She has literally been telling me this forever and the other voices were just louder than hers um both literally and figuratively other people were louder um there was a lot more of other people than there was of my mom my mom is only one person (laughs) and um she did everything she could to get me to believe that I could be whoever I wanted and that was always there but it was challenging for me to like harness that Um, it required other people from outside spaces to come into my life and say hey like you don't you don't actually have to stay inside that box that they have you in Um, you can step out of your cage so another person um, was someone that I met uh, at work several years ago probably the beginning of this like five year stretch um And he was really, he never told me, like, you just got to be yourself. He did that in a way where he loved me. Um, He has loved me since the day that we met, probably. Um, I remember him telling me he loved me a month after we met. And it wasn't in a romantic or a sexual sense. And that was really comforting to me. But I didn't understand that at the time. I literally did not understand that until this morning. Um because I'd had all of these other voices telling me that, well, he can't possibly love you. Like, he's otherwise occupied. He's, like, he's in another relationship. If this is what's going on, like, you guys aren't being truthful or whatever bullshit that they're trying to feed us. Um, continuously to, continuing to tell me slash us that we could never like be friends the way that we were friends um because being friends with someone of the opposite sex was sinful or something um and that's just not real um I was able to have a conversation with him this weekend about just like who we are as people um and who we are in the relationship that we have um And this is a person that I truly and genuinely love. Um, And it's safe. And it's not... It's not able to contaminate other relationships. It is only able to feed them and help them grow and flourish because it helps me be myself. It helps him be himself. It helps us be the people we were designed to be and not the people that we were stuffed into a box and formed into. Um, And that is the most beautiful friendship, I think. I've always been able to be free for the most part when I've been with him unless I've been listening to these, you know, outside voices. And it is just so, so good. Um, another person, and I'm sure that there are more people than this, but the other person is my current partner. Um, he has told me since the day that I met him that I have a voice. I need to use it. 
that I need to be myself, that I'm able to be myself, that I'm able to make decisions for myself um, without his influence, without his control, without his anything, that I can, I can just be Angela. And I've never had that, and so I did not even understand how I could possibly... Like, I didn't think that was an option. And so I basically just was like, yeah, okay, okay. Um, And it kind of ignored what he was telling me. Um, And it occurred to me this morning that this man has also, he has loved me for the person that I am, the person that I didn't know that I could be. Um, And that's also just incredibly freeing and comforting um and there's so much potential for my relationship with him because of the way that he loves me because of the way that he views me as a person and how we believe in each other simply because of this like freedom we've given each other freedom from our past um and it is Honestly, it's amazing. Now, I don't think that I could have heard my current partner's views or his, like, freedom for me had I not already had the friendship with that other person that I've mentioned. Um, Because he really instigated this ability for me to understand that I could be a person outside of the person that I was when I was with these other people these voices that I've referred to previously. Um, And I just want to let you guys know that you are free. Um, We live in a free country, first of all. Um, So you have freedoms. And this isn't me, like, politically telling you, you, well, you got to stand up for your freedoms. Um, That's that's not a thing I do. Um... Because the freedoms that are preached at us like that, I feel like really stick us in a box. And I am so done with boxes. I'm done with cages, done with boxes. Um, Untamed by Glennon Doyle really helped me understand that I was in a cage. Um, It was like I was blind to the cage. um, But that really, really helped me identify it, which has helped me see all of these things in new ways. And the other thing I want you guys to know is that you, your freedom comes from you. It, it's in here and you are free to be your own person. You are free to be the person that your creator made you to be. That he has innately given you a freedom And you are not confined to whatever box they've stuck you in. Whoever they is, whatever box it is, whatever that box looks like, you're not stuck there. You can break out of that box. And it's going to take time. It's going to take healing. It's going to take processing. Probably going to take a lot of therapy. Um, Probably going to take a lot, a lot of work. And you can do it. And it's so important that you do. We need the you that's unboxed, untamed. We need the you that understands their worth. We need need the you that understands your capacity for love. Both receiving and giving love. You are such a powerful force in all that you are. And that is what I need you guys to hear this week. You're loved You're capable of love and love beyond anything you've imagined before. And with that, happy Thursday. I will see you next week.